In 1879, a small British force arrived in Zululand, seeking to expand their empire and assert their dominance over the African continent. They had no idea what they were about to face. The British soldiers were confident, believing their superior weapons and training would make them invincible. But they were about to face a foe unlike any they had encountered before. The British had underestimated their opponents. They had not studied their tactics or trained their soldiers for this type of terrain. The British soldiers had no idea what they were about to face. They were walking into a trap, a battle that would go down in history as one of the greatest military upsets of all time. The Zulu warriors were fast, agile, and deadly. They used a tactic called the Buffalo Horn, surrounding the British soldiers and attacking from both sides. The British soldiers were fighting a losing battle. They were outmatched, outmaneuvered, and outsmarted by the Zulu warriors. The Battle of the Sandalwood was a humbling lesson for the British. It showed that bravery, determination, and a deep understanding of your opponents are the keys to victory. The British soldiers were confident, believing their superior weapons and training would make them invincible. But they were about to face a foe unlike any they had encountered before. The Zulu Empire is remembered as one of the most powerful and influential kingdoms in African history. Their military innovations and strategic genius have inspired countless military leaders and historians, and the Zulu Kingdom remains a symbol of African resistance against colonialism and imperialism. The Zulu people are a Bantu ethnic group that has lived in South Africa for centuries. They are the largest ethnic group in South Africa and their language, Issa Zulu, is one of the 11 official languages of the country. The Zulu people have a rich history that dates back to the early 16th century. The Zulu Empire was founded by King Shaka Kasenzanga Kona in the early 19th century. Shaka was born in 1787 in what is now KwaZulu Natal, South Africa. When Shaka's father died, he and his mother were forced to flee to the neighboring Methwe tribe where Shaka grew up. Shaka was a skilled warrior and strategist, and he rose through the ranks of the Mthethwa army. When his mentor and patron Dingizwayo was killed in battle, Shaka became the leader of the Methwa tribe. He then set out to unify the various Zulu clans and create a powerful Zulu nation. Under Sheikha's leadership, the Zulu army became one of the most formidable fighting forces in Africa. Shaka introduced a number of military innovations, including the use of short stabbing spears, which allowed his warriors to fight in close formation and overwhelm their enemies. He also introduced new tactics, such as the Buffalo Horns formation, which involved encircling and surrounding the enemy, and the Chest and Horns formation, which involved attacking the enemy head on while sending flanking parties around to attack from the sides. Sheikha's military success allowed him to expand the Zulu Empire rapidly. He conquered neighboring tribes, including the Ndwandwe, the Kwaobi, and the Mthethwa, and he consolidated his power by dividing the conquered tribes and appointing loyal chiefs to rule over them. By the time of his death in 1828, Shaka had created a vast empire that covered most of present-day KwaZulu-Natal. The Zulu Wars after Sheikha's death. His half-brother Dingani became the new Zulu king. However, 
Dingani's reign was marked by instability and conflict. He ordered the assassination of his brother and rival, Mathlangana, and he was involved in a number of wars with neighboring tribes. In 1838, the British established a settlement in Port Natal, which was located in the heart of the Zulu kingdom. Dingane saw the British as a threat and he ordered an attack on the settlement. The attack, which became known as the Battle of Blood River, was a disaster for the Zulus. The British, who were armed with guns, were able to repel the Zulu attack and inflict heavy casualties. The battle became a symbol of Africana resistance against black African power. In 1879, the Zulus were once again at war with the British, this time over land and sovereignty. British, who were expanding their control over southern Africa, demanded that the Zulus submit to British rule. When the Zulus refused, the British launched a full-scale invasion of Zululand. The first major battle of the war, the Battle of Asandalwana, was a stunning victory for the Zulus. <laughs> The British, who were poorly prepared and underestimated the Zulu military, suffered a devastating defeat. However, the British were able to regroup and launch a counterattack, culminating in the Battle of Ulundi, which resulted in the defeat of the Zulu army and the end of the Zulu kingdom. Legacy of the Zulu Empire Despite their defeat, the Zulu people have continued to be a major force in South African society. The Zulu language and culture are widely celebrated and Zulu traditions and rituals continue to be practiced. The Zulu people have also played a prominent role in South African politics, with several prominent politicians and leaders, including former President Jacob Zuma, being of Zulu descent. <laughs>